hello, happy Friday. How is everyone? The starting screen needs an overhaul. Why, Daddy? Why? Hey, Trist. What's going on? How's everyone's day? Freaky Friday. Yes, sir. So I added that little events list up there above the follower goal. Don't know if you guys like that there or not, but we'll see how it goes. Just wanted to test it out. Oh, you're a nerd. Yeah, that makes sense, man. I am not a nerd. I am really bad with computer stuff, so that's just really easy for me to do. You're eating some honey peanut butter. Yum. What a good snacky. Thanks, Trist. Okay, so we are going to make some fresh wild halibut burgers today. We are not going to grind this up. We're just going to do it in fillets. And then we're going to put some cheese on it. I originally said provolone, but Sammy's telling me to just do good old orange cheddar, which I think that would probably go better on something crispy, but we can maybe do both and see how it goes. Hello, unknown chef. Welcome in. Do I have any plans this weekend? I actually don't really have any plans. Sammy, are we still making a brisket on Sunday? You know it. We're making a brisket on Sunday because Frank is doing a motorcycle ride for prostate cancer. He's raised some money. So that's what Frank and Betty are doing Sunday. So Sammy and I are going to make a lovely brisket that day. But tomorrow we have no plans, so we're just gonna roll with it. What about you, Trist? A real long barbecue brisket, yeah. Probably around 12 hours, Daddy, so we'll be up pretty early. But it is very worth it to wait that long. And I also am making homemade brioche buns for our halibut burgers today. So I mixed up the dough. I just finished it at 1.30. And then it's going to proof until 3.30, so two hours. And it should be doubled in size by that point. And then we will divide it into eight buns, is what the recipe calls for. And then it has to proof for another hour before we can bake it. So always give yourself around three to four hours if you plan to make any homemade bread for dinner. Oh, right, 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 Memorial Day. You're going to the casino, you're going to a drive and a car event. Nice. Are you bringing the Fiat or the Mazda? That is the question. Will it be streamed or offline event? I don't know, Daddy. I guess we'll see how we feel. We typically don't stream on Sundays, but maybe if we're really bored, we'll do a little stream. But it's not super exciting to stream brisket because it literally just sits there and gets cooked and you don't really open the barbecue either because it let all the heat out. Hey Steve, so far the day is good. How is your day? The Mazda's water pump is leaking, oh no. Gotta get some work done then. Yeah, he guesses. Cam in the barbecue with flashlight, yes. Okay, and then to go with our halibut burgers, we are doing caprese salad with a balsamic glaze and garlic oil. And then before we start anything else, I'm going to quickly feed my sourdough starter and show you guys how that's done. I just have it in a jar here. This was started in January. Her name is Goldilocks, if anyone wants to know. So the timeline today, the buns take three to four hours to make, like I said, and it also depends on how quick they proof. So what I do now to proof my bread is just turn on the oven to a very low heat, let it heat up a bit and then turn it off. So 
so it kind of makes a little proofing chamber in there. You don't want the temperature too hot and obviously you don't want it cold either because then your bread is not going to do anything. So that's been chilling in there since 1.30. I'm not going to open the oven to show you guys because that's going to let all the heat out and then we'll have to start over. And I typically mix the dough around 1 to 1.30 p.m. if you want to eat around 6 p.m., which is kind of a typical time for people to eat dinner. Nice, Steve. The day has been good. You're not melting anymore. <laughs> it's pretty breezy here today. It's, it's still sunny, but it's been very breezy all day, so it's kind of cooled things off. Oh, no way, Tristan. You finally found some good places that aren't super expensive. That's awesome. Have I looked into bread science? No. I'm going to say no because I don't know what bread science is. Unless you explain it further for me, Daddy. And then back to the buns. They bake for 20 minutes and then they have to cool for a bit before we cut into them. Otherwise, it might make the dough inside a little bit soggy if we cut it while it's hot and still steamy. Hello, steampunk. Welcome in on this fine Friday. It's only 20 out. Nice. That must feel amazing then, Steve. And then the rest of the burger fixings can be prepped within 30 minutes and then... So can the caprese salad. And just hold tight if you don't even know what a caprese salad is. When I told Betty I was making caprese salad today, she's like, what? What is a crazy salad? <laughs> I was like, no, caprese. It's Italian. It's really insane. It, so it's something about taking temp of the flour, divide by something. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I have looked into that Daddy. I looked into that more when I was like still working in restaurants and stuff, but typically when I bake at home, it's like a little bit more low key, but I totally know what you're talking about. Yes. Yes. It's all about the temps of, yeah, your flour, the temperature of your room and your water. And then you can kind of find the optimal temp for proofing. I am impressed that you know that by the way. Start cooking, never chef. I always start my day by greeting my people and going over our plan for the day. So you just have to hold tight. A crazy salad, yes, Steve, you'll see. Sometimes I can overthink a thing, pretty much steampunk. So ingredients, obviously for our halibut burgers, we need halibut. So I have three separate pieces here that I bought and they all range around $15. So yes, it's not cheap. That's why I decided to do this on a Friday so we don't have to make any leftovers for lunches during the week. So there's one. There's another one. And then this one is actually the best one. So whenever you're looking for fish, you don't want really a tail piece. So this is a little bit lesser quality because when you near the end of the tail, there's a lot more sinew and stuff down there. So it's not as nice of flesh to use. So keep that in mind. So I tried to pick where it was mostly just the inside fillet pieces because those are really, really nice. Coco Skoongin, thanks for the follow, welcome in. Chef, don't be sorry. You're just not up to date on how my stream works. Don't even be sorry. 15 bucks for that. Yeah, it's expensive, Tristan, but it's wild, so it is worth it. We only have halibut every now and then, but sometimes you just got to treat yourself. Okay, and then for the buns, all of these recipes are in Discord. Oh, yeah. Death with the host. Thank you, man. But I can quickly post it in chat as well. So last time I made this bun recipe, I did it for the turkey burgers. I'm not sure if anyone in here remembers that, but they didn't proof up enough. And then they ended up being very dense and small. They're still edible, but not quite the texture I was looking for. So I'm gonna try and redeem myself today. 
Sup, sup, death. Welcome in, man. How's the day? And then on with the rest of our ingredients for the burgers. So you need some type of cheese. That's optional, though. You don't have to put cheese. Just I think it's going to be really tasty with that. Keeping the burgers quite simple as well. So we're just doing cheese and greens. And then I'm going to make up a really nice tartar sauce from scratch with a couple different pickles, some capers, dill and chives and lemon zest. And that will be really fresh and bright tasting to complement our halibut. And then on with our caprese salad. We need some heirloom multicolor tomatoes. So I was lucky enough to find these little cherry ones grown in BC. So I picked those ones up at the store. I'm sure they're going to be really nice and sweet. And then you want a soft mozzarella cheese. This is what I'm going to use today. Just a little pack like this. We're probably not going to use the whole thing, but we might. We'll see how many slices we get out of it when it comes time to prep it. Sam, do you remember how much this piece cost? I think around $9? Yeah. $9, $10 for this. So... We got this from Costco. We've had it before on pizza and it is very, very lovely. Super buttery in flavor. Nice death, just chilling. That's a good Friday, man. Nice way to roll into the weekend. And then we need some basil for our caprese salad. So I just picked a couple little bunches right before the stream. And then just some lettuce greens to make a bed for the salad. Typically, this salad does not have lettuce in it, but I'm just trying to make it a little bit more healthy for us. So I'm going to put a bed of lettuce underneath everything. I think it's allowed. And then I'm going to make a balsamic glaze. So with balsamic vinegar and honey, those are going to cook down and get really nice and thick. And then we'll be able to just drizzle it over the tomatoes and the cheese. The farmer's market starts soon. It's true. You can take little bike rides out. Hey, Sammy. Yep. Hey, Scat. Welcome, welcome. With the wagon. <laughs> We're going to attach the wagon to the bike. I don't know about that. Okay, and that's it for ingredients, guys. So pretty easy stream today. We're keeping it chill. Yes to the balsamic death. I know. Caprese salads are one of my favorite 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 salads how can you go wrong with tomatoes cheese and basil so order of prep like i said at 1 30 i made the bun dough and it's been proofing in the oven since then next up we're going to feed goldilocks aka my sourdough starter it is time and then after that, we'll make up our balsamic glaze. There's not a lot of cooking today, guys. And then at 3.30, we will portion our buns into eight pieces. And then we have to wait another hour until we can bake them. Then we will make our tartar sauce while we're waiting and the caprese salad. Around 4.45, we will bake the buns. And then right when they come out of the oven, we'll cook up the halibut real quick. And that's it. Very, very simple stream. I'll be surprised if we go all the way to 6 p.m. today. Hoping to finish a little bit earlier. Is Omdog the Chef my Sammy? Yes, Steve. Omdog the Chef is my Sammy. <laughs> Okay, so brief history of caprese salad, because I'm sure some of you have never had this before. But let's get into a couple of fun facts before we start. Random question, Scat. What's the author of the ingredient cookbook? I don't think there is one set author. Let me go check for you real quick. But I'm quite sure there wasn't an author last time I looked at it. There's just like a publishing company. So hopefully that can help you find it. I'm pretty sure someone said they saw it on Amazon before. You should watch what you say, never, Steve. 
Never. here top secret info death i love it it's just called the cook's book of ingredients and then the publisher is dk dk publishing and then the rest of it's just editors so look for this if you see this you got the right book scat Okay, carrying on with our fun facts. So one of the most delicious dishes found in all of Italian cuisine is caprese salad or insalata caprese. <laughs> this dish marries some of the most notable ingredients in Italian cuisine, including tomatoes, olive oil, fresh mozzarella cheese, and fresh basil. The dish has been popular for many decades, but where did it actually come from? So the first origin story for caprese salad dates back to post-World War I Italy. A patriotic mason wanted to make a dish that was a true tribute to Italy and that visually incorporated the tricolor into the presentation. No problem, Scat. So the first printed mention of the caprese salad was on a menu at the Hotel Quisiana. Not sure where that is. I should have looked further into that. After the initial or the initial positive response, caprese salad was enjoyed by many but failed to really catch fire. King Farouk in the 1950s asked his chef for a light afternoon snack and was served a caprese sandwich. That would be delicious too. At that point, the rest is history. Tourists began to flock to the region and caprese salad soon became known as a staple of Capri food and culture. So Capri is a little island just outside or off of Naples. And I've been there, so I have a little story to tell you guys about that too. Over time, the recipe was refined and improved by adding buffalo mozzarella instead of the traditional vaccine mozzarella. I don't have buffalo mozzarella here today. It is quite expensive, but if you can get your hands on it, I would always recommend trying it at least once. I almost got sick off of buffalo mozzarella in Italy when I was younger. I was there for like a soccer kind of retreat or a tournament with my high school. I was in the soccer academy and we were staying in an old commune and the people that owned the commune would cook for us every night after we finished playing our soccer games for the day and there was always buffalo mozzarella on the table. I ate so much one night I almost got sick and I was like I can't it's it's just too good. <laughs> So that's the cheese that when you cut into it, it kind of just like oozes out. It's insanely soft and creamy. You want to make cheese, butter, and bread? Yes. Yes. All of those things are quite easy to make, Scott. I should just do a cheese, butter, and bread stream one day. Butter in the Vitamix. <laughs> Cheese in the pot, bread in the oven. <laughs> yeah. Boom. Okay, so it is said that the caprese salad is supposed to represent all three colors in the Italian flag. So just keep that in mind. But it'll make sense when we make it because tomatoes are red, cheese is white, and basil is green. How tough is making sourdough? Uh, 
it has its moments, Mr. Zombie Bones. Like, I've had a lot of success. I've also had some fails. And like Daddy was talking about earlier, it's all about the temperatures of your ingredients and your room. Because sourdough doesn't get kneaded. It doesn't have yeast in it, so you're only relying on the natural yeasts and bacteria from the air or from your starter to be able to make the bread rise. And obviously from the temperature of the room. Because yeast likes to be nice and warm. And then as it eats the flour, it's going to create sugars and burp and fart. And that's what creates all the bubbles in your bread. And then as you do your folds for your sourdough, instead of kneading, the folds create the gluten elasticity. And that's what holds all of the air bubbles inside your bread. So if there's one thing that is off in your sourdough, it will not work. And it'll be very sad looking, but it'll still be edible. That's the good thing. Yeah. Nude watching from shadows. Thanks for the follow. And welcome in. So I've done probably, let's say, about 10 loaves of sourdough, at least, zombie bones. Haven't done any lately. I still have yet to make a loaf here. Maybe I should experiment with that tomorrow and maybe try a loaf and see how it goes. But you never know if you don't try. My favorite recipe is from Tartine Bakery in LA. It's called Country Bread and it takes a long time to make. I will tell you that like you need a full day to be able to make this. Because you start it and then for two and a half hours, every half hour, you fold the bread onto itself. And then after that, it still has to proof at room temp for three hours before you can bake it. And then it bakes for almost an hour in the oven. So very, very long process. And that is why bread like that can be very expensive because it's very labor involved. And people don't realize that. And store-bought bread, like Wonder Bread and stuff like that, is not even really bread. So please don't buy that. And thank you for all the questions. You're making me really excited to make a loaf of sourdough. It's been a while. I think we should do a little bit of halibut history first, and then we'll get started. You love Wonder Bread. I know everyone does. And then the way that they make most store-bought bread that is like brought in, not from the bakery, but just the ones in the plastic bags, like Wonder Bread or whatever. This muffin though, holy. Yeah. So they load those breads with sugar so that the yeast eats it up super fast and that's what makes the bread rise fast and they can produce a lot of bread in a short amount of time. So that's very, very bad for you. And most people that think they are allergic to gluten are actually allergic to all of the processed yeasts that they put into those breads. Yeah, maybe I'll make a sourdough to go along with the brisket, Scat. Maybe that's a good idea. What kind of ingredients are in pizza crust? Flour, yeast, salt, water. That's it. I know, Shadow Whisper. Welcome in. It's a good muffin, Yuri. I know the caramel kind of like hardened up. It's good. You can only get Wonder Bread in America. Yeah, North America. <laughs> is what? that your first one? Uh, this muffin. It's good. He never had a muffin Do yesterday. It. That's his own fault. Okay, on to our halibut. So halibut's a common name principally applied to the two flat fish in the genus Hippoglossus. And it's from the family of right eye flounders. Less commonly and in some regions only, other species of flatfish are also referred to as being halibuts. The word is derived from hali, meaning holy, and but, B-U-T-T-E, meaning flat fish, for its popularity on Catholic holy days. 
Halibut are demersal fish and are highly regarded as a food fish. So wrong and so right, Scott. It's true. But I think the Wonder Bread made back then was probably made more proper than it is now. Yeah, it's literally mostly air and sugar. Like if you look at the sugar content on those breads, it's insane. So the Pacific halibut is the world's largest flat fish. And the record was apparently broken off the waters of Norway in July 2013 with a 515 pound halibut, 8.6 feet long. Insane. <laughs> that would be massive. So halibut are dark brown on the top side with an off-white underbelly and have very small scales invisible to the naked eye. And those are embedded in their skin. How much sugar is in home-baked bread? Well, typically sourdough has no sugar in it. That's why it takes so long to make. Because the yeast slowly eats the flour and makes the sugars on its own. But today in the buns, I put 40 grams of sugar into it for eight buns. I don't love to put sugar in bread, but you need it if you're going to use any type of packaged yeast. So halibut are symmetrical at birth with one eye on each side of the head. Then about six months later, during larval metamorphosis, one eye migrates to the other side of the head. What? The eyes are permanently set once the skull is fully ossified. Posh, can you not? That's enough. Had to yell at her for one time in her life. Sammy is trying to weed whack and she wants to go outside and is just being a shit. The menu command works, Tuli. So I messaged Stream Elements, he got back to me and then I literally updated it today and it was, I was like, what if I just like enable and disable the command? And sure enough, it works now. So go for it. I was like, thank you so much for your help. But I ended up figuring it out. But they're really nice. Yes, Polish. I saw your message, my dude. I'm sorry I haven't answered yet. But that sounded really good. I actually had some Mexican rice for lunch as well. Yeah, bad doggo, just scratch in the door. I'm gonna close this as well. You're all done now, nice. Was it delicious? Okay, so at the same time that the, the stationary eye side darkens to match the top side, while the other side still remains white. That is so crazy. The color scheme disguises halibut from above, so it blends with the ocean floor. So instead of their eye on the top being white, it turns dark. So it kind of blends in with the sand. And then from below, the fish blends into the light from the sky because the, what, the eye is white and the underbelly is white as well. So it's hard for fish to decipher that. And this is known as counter shading. You had the heat on too high for the double batch of rice. Got a big lot of rice burns. No, I am sad for you. There are no need bread recipes that have no sugar and ferment overnight. Yes, exactly. Shadow. My favorite, favorite one is tartine country bread. I've made this a lot of times and I also have the tartine bread book and that's in PDF so I don't know if I could share that with you guys or not but I'm just gonna post it in chat if anyone wants to experiment with sourdough I think this recipe is the best place to start got five meals out of it nice that is awesome polish 
Okay, so halibut feed on almost any fish or animal they can fit into their mows. Juvenile halibut feed on small crustaceans and other bottom-dwelling organisms. Animals found in their stomachs include sand lance, I don't know what that is, octopus, crab, salmon, hermit crabs, oh no, cod, pollock, herring, and flounder, as well as other halibut, savage. Halibut live at depths ranging from a few meters to hundreds of meters, and although they spend most of their time near their bottom, halibut may move up in the water column to feed. In most ecosystems, the halibut is near the top of the marine food chain. In the North Pacific, common predators are sea lions, killer whales, salmon sharks, and humans. That's us. Okay, sounds good, Paul. Shh. See you soon, maybe. So fishery in Canadian and US waters, long line fishing predominates using chunks of octopus or other bait on circle hooks attached at regular intervals to a long weighted line that can extend for several miles across the bottom of the ocean. The fishing vessel retrieves the line after several hours to a day. The effects of long line gear on habitats are poorly understood, but could include disturbance of sediments, benthic structures, and other structures. Interesting. Has anyone here ever cleaned a halibut or ever seen one whole? Because they are seriously the ugliest fish ever. <laughs> and they also have four fillets. I don't know if you guys remember me telling you that before, but instead of swimming like this, they swim like this. So they have two fillets on top and two fillets underneath. Very, very different to clean, but it's pretty easy to clean them as well. The fillets come off quite nicely. Hey guys, let's get started. That's enough for fun facts. Hopefully you learned a little bit. You've never seen one, Shadow? They are crazy looking. I think the biggest one that I've ever seen was probably like this that we got in at the first restaurant I ever worked at. And of course, I was super fresh, so I didn't get to touch it at all, but I was just like, holy, that's a big fish. Yeah, exactly, Scott. They are huge. Well, like I said, the largest one was, what, 500 pounds and 8.6 feet long? Insane. Okay, let's feed Goldilocks. Yes? Can I pinch off the chat heads, or do you want to use them for plating? Uh, sure, I can use them for plating. You want a bowl or something? Because they're just starting to bloom. I don't want to get rid of them before they get too hard. Thank you. Guys, Betty's foraging the garnishes tonight. <laughs> yeah, the fish was picked on a lot. For sure, Steve. <laughs> Okay, we're getting into our starter. So I used a little bit in the buns today. I only have a little bit left in this jar. And I'm actually a little concerned because I've never had mold on this yet. So I need to get that off ASAP. You never want mold in with your starter. That is not good. I'm guessing someone touched this with a dirty spoon. Look at our nice little chai flowers that we can put on our salad. Nice, Trist. At least it's tasty, exactly. Yeah, I'm super concerned about this mold. I 
I don't want any to fall in either. Okay, it has been scraped off. So obviously you can see, even though it's fermented, it can still mold. So you still always want to use clean stuff when you feed it. So I need just all purpose flour here, guys. It doesn't look like a fish. Chives bloom? Yes, Scott. You didn't know? We make these lovely little flowers that are like kind of papery, but they actually taste like onions still. And they're so lovely. I love that color. The jar of stuff. This is my sourdough starter. This is Goldilocks. I can't throw it out. It's like four months old. She's uh, she's seen some stuff. But I do have to let dog out. She hates my scale. You're done? It's clear over there. Hey, get going. Shut the ham out. <laughs> and so to feed the starter, guys, we need equal parts by weight, flour, and lukewarm water. That's it. You don't add any yeast to this starter. It creates its own yeast. So... We're going to mix the flour and the water together first, make it nice and smooth, and then we're going to mix it into the rest of the starter. So I'm going to do 100 grams of each, and then we'll go from there. Should fit in there. And for the lukewarm water, I always go between 80 and 95 Fahrenheit. It should feel like just warm to the touch. And if you make it too warm, then it'll kill your yeast. So you don't want that. White powder in the scale. Watch out, Trist. <laughs> yeah, your shopping list is growing, Scat. But that's the fun part, is collecting all these things. Because they should last you quite a while. Okay, there's our 100 grams of water. And then I always put just a little pinch of whole wheat flour as well. And this will slow down the yeast activity a bit because there's not as much sugar in whole wheat flour. And it's just, it also just adds a little bit of health to your starter, having all those nice stone ground whole grains in there. Kristen, you thought this was a food baking stream. What are you talking about? We're here making this so we can make food. Okay, now I can open the window again. Yay. Yay. Yeah, hey. This is like the most basic form of food. Like think about that one time that someone mixed flour and water and let it sit and then it started to expand. They were probably like, what is going on? And then I don't know whose idea it was to bake this, but kudos to them. And you don't want any lumps in this. Okay. 
Okay, that looks good. Super tasty. I'm quite sure the world would end or go to war if something happened to bread or flour. This is like the one major food staple of the world. And like, there's actually riots around the world when bread or flour prices go up. Insane. And then we literally just mix this in to what was already in the jar. Make sure it's nice evenly mixed. And you can use your hands as well because there's natural bacteria on your hands that will help this. Just make sure they're clean. That's all. And then after this is fed, leave it out for around half an hour and then you can put it back into the fridge until you want to use it again. And then it can stay there for up to two weeks without being fed. Because obviously with the yeast being in the fridge, it slows down activity exponentially. Whereas if it stays out at room temp, it'll eat up the flour super quick and you actually have to feed it twice a day. That's it guys. Yeah, exactly, Scott. It's as simple as that. Okay, so we're pretty much at the point where we have to divide our buns. So let's look at the dough and see how it's doing. It's almost been two hours, so I'm gonna pull it out and let's see. <laughs> Love you, Trist. I'm sure we all do. And what's up, Jim? So obviously it should be just warm enough in there and this should not be hot at all. Nice. Looking really good. Feels super fluffy. I think it's almost there. If you guys can see that. But really nice and stretchy. My camera's having a seizure. Classic. It's a firm dough. Yeah, it's it's super nice. So we're almost at that point. We can put together the balsamic glaze and then we'll come back to this. How about that? So obviously for the glaze, we need some balsamic vinegar. And I said around a cup of this vinegar is what we'll use to make the glaze today. And then around a tablespoon of honey. I'm not gonna add the honey just yet because it might stick to the bottom and want to burn. So we're just gonna start by reducing the vinegar. And I'm gonna hope that I even have that much. And this'll take maybe around half an hour to an hour. Oh, Costco is super popular in Canada. It's like the one really awesome place to buy stuff in bulk that you use a lot. And plus their products are really nice. So we almost used the whole bottle. Twas close. So 
now this, I'm just gonna put it on the small burner here. And we will do medium heat for now. Have my sheet pans here for our buns. That's car oil. <laughs> no, Jim, it's vinegar. I know it looks super thick, hey? Gotta get that set up. Our dough scraper. Then our lovely dough. So it doesn't feel too sticky. It's typically how it should be if you're using a dough that has either butter or eggs in it or both like this one. So you shouldn't need a lot of flour when it comes to balling it up. There's that, there's the bottom of the bowl. It's pretty clean. And that's also why I love to make doughs with butter in it, because it's quite easy to work with. <laughs> it sounds good, Scat. Got the munchies already. And then this recipe says it makes eight buns, so let's portion this into eight. I think I'm just gonna bunch this up a little bit more. Cut it in half and then cut it into four. And you want to make sure all of the portions are equal size. If you don't want to eyeball it or if you're not too good at eyeballing portion sizes, you can use a scale. That is A-OK, -okay. and that way it'll be very accurate. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. And then as always, we're gonna get to roll in. So using my thumb, I push, and then my other fingers, I pull, and that'll make the bun Really nice and tight and smooth. And then it's also gonna help with not having a big seam on the bottom. But I can already tell this dough feels a lot better than the last time I made it. So you want something that looks like that. And those little bubbles, if you want, you can just like push them out. And then that is gonna go onto a lined baking tray. <laughs> Jim, it shows your phone number. That's intense, man. That's how much you weigh, insane. And I'm gonna do four buns per tray. They are just too big to be able to do eight on a tray. <laughs> Love how your phone number has 0.5 at the end. Call me maybe. So what did everyone eat today? Tris, what was for lunch? Okay, there's four. Space them out really nice. And then that just gets covered with a tea towel. Whew, I can smell the vinegar heating up already. It's tingling the nostrils.
Amen. Hello. Welcome in. You have an offer. Okay, go for it. It better be good. You could pay $80 for a pair of my socks. That's creepy. Jim will send his tatas. There you go. That's way better. The profit, though. It's true. Sam, should I sell a pair of my socks for $80? Sure. He says yes. Okay, you got a deal then. What if the person sniffs them? Okay. What's there? It's theirs. Okay, I'm down. I'm down, Eamon. Let's do it. <laughs> Making that bank. You guys hear the bubbles coming out of the buns? The bubbling. Where are you going? Rebecca. You'll DM. Kate, sounds good. <laughs> what is going on right now? Freaky Friday, Trist. There we are. This is what you wanted, man. Freaky Friday. This is the freakiest. Now I want to play the Freaky Friday song. Freaky Friday. I am not your goddess. That's for sure. You're right. Yeah. I'm Sammy's goddess. Okay, there's the other buns. You believe in what you want? <laughs> that doesn't mean I'm your goddess though. Okay, just gonna quickly wipe off our area because it might be a little buttery. We had a chicken penne pasta with saltine crackers on top and hummus chips. Nice. That's a good one, Tris. Hey guys, you see the vinegar starting to heat up? I don't know if you can see the steam coming off of that. Hey, Loriander, how are you? I'm happy you're back. Okay, so these buns, the oven's not very hot anymore. So I think I'm gonna turn it on again for a little bit. Make another little proofing chamber. And then we'll stick them back in. Typically, I do like really, really low temp. Around like 200 Fahrenheit. Let it heat up for five minutes and then just turn it off. Easy peasy. I would rather none of those things. You can call me Kate. Steve, you had raisin toast, and for supper is macaroni and meat sauce. Nice. So good. So good. Okay, just crossing off what we've done already. And I should probably set the timer for an hour. And then we get to bake the buns. That vinegar is strong, guys. The cooking goddess likes donations, it's true. Weirdness alert, pretty much. Pretty much, Loriander. We're dealing with it. <laughs> See, I don't have to say much because you guys just make them feel awkward anyways, and that is so entertaining to me, so thank you for that. <laughs> okay, so I also have question of the day are you guys ready hopefully all of you guys can answer it and even if you don't it is okay so what is your favorite fish to eat 
and how do you prepare it? Okay, now you're just being weird. Yes, Lemon. Yes. She came out of the lurking. It's true, Eamon. It's being weird. You just want them not washed. Of course. <laughs> hey, Daddy's doll. Maybe 85. Oh my God. Do I have a good chocolate chip cookie recipe? And if so, do I use all-purpose flour or bread flour? I always use all-purpose flour. I don't really believe in the whole like bread flour thing. That's just my thing. And do I have a good recipe? I always just like to try a couple different recipes online. I think chocolate chip recipes are pretty basic. But let me see if I can find one that I have made before. Yeah, there it is. They are literally called the best chocolate chip cookies recipe. I've made these before and there is 9,600 reviews on them being positive. So check that one out, Daddy's Doll. No problem. Tristan, halibut fish. You wrap it in tin foil with butter and lemon, wrap it up and cook it on the barbecue. Yum. Yum, Tris. That sounds so good. Mama Reagan, hello, welcome in. I'm guessing you're all bundled up in bed. Haddock battered from the chip shop. So good. You can't really go wrong with haddock sometimes. It's true. It's true, Eamon. Lemon's holding it down. No problem, Daddy's doll. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How will you know they're mine, though, Eamon? What if they are gems? <laughs> exactly, Tris. It's like, what is this going to lead to? <laughs> Oh, steampunk, yes. Fresh caught trout pan fried over a campfire. See, when I was younger and we used to go fishing, we would catch like walleye, it's called, or whitefish in Alberta lakes. And it is so good. Just simply pan fried over the fire. Thank you for bringing me back there, steampunk. What are you saying, Eamon? I don't want any caps lock in there. I don't appreciate being yelled at. Borks Kevin, it's nice to see you in here. Okay, we'll just prop that open for a sec. It's just a little too warm for our buns. You think sole or turbot is your current favorite? Poached in butter to medium, nice. That's a very Swedish thing to choose. I have not eaten a lot of turbot in my time. Sounds good, mama. I'm just happy you're here. The kitchen defense force is strong. Yes, Shadow. You guys got my back. That's what I was thinking, Trist. I was like, Sammy's socks probably smell way better than mine do. The deal is not off. You have to go through limping lemon, Amen. You have to pay attention to what we tell you. <laughs> okay, carrying on. Can you guys see the vinegar bubbling? It shouldn't take too long now. <laughs> I'm not lying. Amen. one more word in chat and you're gone. Okay, Trist, I'm done. I'm bored now. 
done with the pity party. Steve, what do I have planned for the weekend? Daddy was asking us earlier too, I think. And we were saying that Sam and I are going to make a brisket on Sunday. So we're going to be doing some barbecuing for like 12 hours. And maybe I'll make a loaf of sourdough bread. But we have nothing planned for tomorrow. I'm not sure if maybe we'll go for a bike ride if the weather's nice. We'll just leave it up to fate. What about you, Steve? Okay, the oven's cooled off really nicely. And our little bunners are going in to proof up. And we will see them in an hour. Easy peasy. <laughs> Drew, <laughs> your eyes are dilated. What happened? And hello, back to the food. Yay. Nice, steampunk. Beach houses are always fun. Four yards of turf, not the funnest. No. Doing that hard labor. Okay, I'm just going to get a refill and then we are going to start working on our tartar sauce. Woohoo. You had an eye exam. Okay. See, so I've never had those drops put in, so I don't know how that feels, but I know a couple of people that have had it and it's crazy. It's called manpower. Steve's a man. Hey, our vinegar is reducing quite quickly. I'm just going to turn down the heat a bit, but it is almost there. And then if you end up taking your balsamic glaze too far, like it gets too thick, just add a little bit of warm water to thin it back out. Easy peasy. So let's get out the stuff for our tartar sauce while we're waiting. I need mayo whipping cream dill pickles, pickled beans, hello Guy Fox, how are you today? We also need capers, dill, chives, and lemon zest. We got the capers. And the dill. Woohoo. Thanks, Guy Fox. Yeah, I just like brushed it today and then like watered it back down. <laughs> Otherwise it'd be like out to here. It's doing its own thing. What is that next to the blender? A jar of honey? The honey pot. Or this. Is this what you could see? This is our like butcher block oil. So this is what I put onto my cutting board when I clean it up really nice. So I typically do that on Saturdays. I take salt and lemon, rub it all over my cutting board to kind of like deodorize it and clean it. 
And then you rub it down with this oil and that's what helps the wood stay really nice and it won't start to come apart. Okay, that stuff's almost good. I don't even think I'm gonna start the tartar sauce. Won't it leak into the food? Nope, because then I wipe it off after if it doesn't soak in and it is totally food safe. Oh my God, see what's up? I haven't heard that in so long. So we're gonna make the tartar sauce in this guy. Scary movie, yep. So good. Once it starts to get crazy bubbly like that, you really have to watch it because it can burn super quick. I feel like I'm getting a like nasal detox in here. That's all I smell is vinegar. <laughs> and don't put your nose right in the pot and sniff it. You will regret that decision. Okay, I'm gonna stir the honey in. We want a tablespoon. And we'll see where we're at. school did I go to in Alberta? I went to Archbishop O'Leary in Edmonton. Okay. So this is our glaze. So it's still, it looks runny still, but it's totally not because you can see how it's coating the back of the spoon there. That's perfect. That's what you want. So you can just leave that out at room temp to cool off. We don't want to put it in the fridge yet because it will harden up quite a bit. So this can be left out at room temp. Just keep it in a container and that's it. If you put it in the fridge, it will harden up. So just keep that in mind. But that was very easy to make. And we've also made this glaze with stout in it. So stout beer. It looks like gravy. Yeah, it's thick. Just for you, helicopter. How are you feeling today, by the way? Was that good, Sammy? Oh, okay. Is that tar? Pretty much, Steve. Okay, let's make tartar sauce. Tartar sauce. So I'm not going to make too much of it here. Let's start with our mayo and whipping cream. So one cup of mayo, which is half of this container, and a quarter cup of cream. You're eating lamb. Yay! And samosas. Yum. Mimosas and samosas. Mimosas and samosas. Guys, biggest jar of mayo ever. Boom. What is Jim getting into? Oh my God, that's terrifying looking. 
What is that? Did you make that? What would I consider the best place to eat in Victoria? Honestly, Tris, I am not up to date on the best Victoria restaurants. We haven't gone out to eat at like anywhere super fancy in a long, long time. But I hear there's like some pretty amazing spots. One is called Agrius. So we're just using the whipping cream to kind of thin out our mayo so that our tartar sauce is either dippable or spreadable. You want to mix it until it's smooth. You don't want it to be lumpy before you start to add in everything else. And you can kind of see how you want your texture to be. So maybe we'll do a little bit more. That's a lot of mayo, Guy Fox. How about Vancouver? Oh man, my favorite restaurant in Vancouver is called Wildebeest. And then my second favorite restaurant in Vancouver is called Campagnolo Roma. Both are like medium expensive, but really, really good food. Your brother's gonna be working in Victoria? That's so cool, Steve. What's he doing? See, your brother could come over for dinner one day. Craziness. So that looks really good. And the cream is gonna make it a lot lighter texture as well than just using mayo. So I'm gonna quickly put those back in the fridge. <laughs> Legend of Kate, hello. Another Kate's in here. Love it. Let's just set that aside. He's building a hotel chain. What? That's super cool. And we need one pickle, one bean. We're gonna dice those up fine. Use like a medium sized pickle. There's our pickled bean. The beans are a lot more tangy than the dill pickles. And then we want around a teaspoon of capers chopped. Wildebeest is really, really good, Trist. We've gone there for dinner. We've gone there for brunch. We only had one bad experience there, but the kitchen got like slammed one night. And we ended up getting like a free meal out of it afterwards. So I am totally okay with that. They redeemed themselves a hundred percent. It happens. Like if anything, I should be the most understanding, but I did not love getting fed raw pork. <laughs> so I, I kind of had to complain even though I didn't want to. I was like, this is my favorite restaurant. I don't want to do that. But yeah, their food is unreal. And then they have this thing where you can pick a price point of what you want to spend on dinner. And then they will literally just send you food until you're full and until they have costed out what you want to spend. It's so much fun. And then you can tell them what you like and don't like, and then they'll just make up a little menu for you. Yeah, the French toast. We had their uh, donuts at brunch with the caramel sauce. Oh my God, too good. And that restaurant was around a 20 minute walk for us or 25 minutes from our old place in Vancouver. So it was really nice to walk there around the creek and then walk home afterwards after you're stuffed walk the dinner off. So now we're just gonna finally chop our pickle. Working on a little bit of knife skills today. 
so <laughs> there's not too much else to do, honestly. That's the restaurant where I had the roasted bone marrow as well. And I like it there as well, Tris, because like most of their dishes are meant for sharing. So they present a lot of stuff family style. a rough week or what? Pretty much Tristan. That is one of the main reasons I left Vancouver because it is, it feels so unsafe. I don't know. I don't know how they're going to sustain that. Like they've put up tents so that the homeless zombies can shoot up heroin safely. Like how, how and why is that a thing? Like that should not even be allowed. It's illegal. Why are these people not being put in jail or like being punished? I don't get it. But literally everyone there can just do whatever they want and the police don't give a crap. And I was so sick of seeing people shooting up drugs or being overdosed on the side of the street that it really got to me. That's definitely one of the main reasons I left. It does not make you feel good walking around all the time and seeing that. Considering most of Vancouver is like disgustingly wealthy yeah they don't care at all okay there's all of our pickled things so the capers are pretty salty and then the pickles will just add a nice balance from our rich mayo and cream I'm just gonna line up my chives here and then we'll give them a nice fine chop and then we'll chop up some dill as well. And we just need to zest some lemon and then season this up. And yes, homemade tartar sauce is so much better than store-bought. It's pretty easy to make, I think. And you can make like your own combinations of pickles or whatever you want to throw into it. Some people like to put onion into it. I'd rather have like a lighter onion flavor, so I chose chives. Oh my God, Opterix, I was actually thinking about you. It was either yesterday or today, but I was like, I really hope he's done grading soon. I think he said by the end of this week and here you are. How did everything go? Has the stress been lifted or is it still <laughs> pretty crazy? What happened to Butt? I don't know. Yeah, she hasn't been in here in a while. She posted her lunch on Instagram today, but I'm sure she's busy. Okay, there's our little chivers. You're in May term, so there's still lots to do. Boo! School is 
done for you in a couple of weeks though, yeah? Yeah, there we go. You had to write award speeches and all that. Oh man. But then you get the whole summer off, yeah? So I guess the hard work pays off is what I'm trying to say. You're teaching a course how to fly and build quad coffers. That is so cool. Social impact filmmaking. You teach some very cool courses, Opterix. We don't need a ton of dill here, guys. You still want to be able to taste everything else in your tartar sauce. Pick it off the stem. You like a wide variety of topics. Well, yeah. Keeps everyone interested. You can see. Drew can see again. Holy shipped noodles. I've never heard that and I love that saying already. You don't see our post of lunch? I swear I saw it today on Insta. I think she had a salad or something. Okay, so we're just gonna chop this up. Maybe I'll take this other big stem out of there. for time 32 minutes on our buns then we can bake them so we better get going in the garden what is the black pipe for on the side so that's where we can fill the bottom of the garden bed so underneath all of the dirt is a bunch of tubing that you fill with water and then it, the water goes up through the bottom of the garden bed instead of the top and then that acts more like a natural growth I guess compared to always watering from the top because typically when you grow stuff in the ground it, the water seeps up to the roots right so that's what that is for. That's where we fill the garden beds. So they're all full. And then there's little spouts on the side where it will drain out if there's too much water. And then that way it won't get overwatered. Yeah, it's a very, very cool system. The cringy courses are the best, Opterix, I bet. You gotta have fun with it. One guy had a voice so soft that you had to amplify it. Oh my God. What is this? Did you guys hear that? That is literally freaking me out. Helicopter, you had to make a movie trailer in high school. Teacher picked groups of five and the worst people. Love it. Photo of a door with a vine over it. Is that grapes? That's the grapes, Tris. Okay. Last thing going in, other than salt and pepper, our lemon. We're just gonna zest it. Actually, we'll probably juice it a little bit too. Probably half of this lemon will get juiced into here. Yes, Opteryx, someone came into my chat yesterday and told us that. I was like, what? He had cancer? That's so sad. So we don't want to overpower it with the lemon zest either. We like three quarters of it.
You followed StarCraft since 2010. Wow. And he was always the voice of it? Okay, so squeezing our juice in. Just holding my hand over to catch the seeds, hopefully. <laughs> or, you know, drop them in. Either or. Of course, there's lemon juice in my cut again. He would start off matches with, in the blue trunks, we have, I like it. Okay, so now I'm gonna mix this up. I'm not gonna season it yet, because the pickles are quite salty. So let's just see how it tastes first. I think it's gonna be quite lovely. looks pretty good guys it looks like a tartar sauce yeah yum totally just need a little bit of salt but I think it's quite balanced and some pepper am I making the recipe just for the halibut yep you know it but then this, this will stay in the fridge for quite a while still. Like a good couple of weeks at least. Depending on how your cream is, I suppose. So let's do like a quarter of a teaspoon of salt. You know it's mayo. Do you hate mayo, Guy Fox? <laughs> Hopefully the salt brings out all of our other flavors. And then tartar sauce is always better if you let it sit for a little bit before you even use it. I would say probably even make it the day before would be the best. Mm, mm -hmm. A little bit of salt in there was perfect. Same with the pepper. You hate tuna mayo. I know lots of people that hate tuna sandwiches. Oh my God, Trist, again? Yum. Guys, that's a really good tartar sauce. The only exception is egg salad and a little bit spread on my sandwiches. Well, that's fair, Guy Fox. I mean, I'm not a huge mayo fiend either, but I know when it's needed. So that can go into the fridge. We don't want to leave that out at room temp. Obviously there's dairy in it. Lemon, you've never had tartar sauce. The heck you need to make this then please. Yeah. What the heck Trist? You need to go, you need to set up a little camera or something. Catch those guys. Hey, Stinky, how are you? How's the Friday? So we are moving on to making the salad. And I'm just gonna grab a plate out. But here are our tomatoes. You like tartar sauce with fish and chips? Yep. Oh, I get it, lemon. I get it. 
You got me. <laughs> yeah, Trist, if only it was Banksy. With the spray paint. If only. Those are happy buns in the oven. You like foreign tartar sauce. Yellow mayo. Maybe it's just from their like egg yolks or something. Ugh. Went into the depths for this very large plate. I'm just gonna make sure it is nice and clean. I haven't used it in a bit. This is what we're gonna build our salad on. So we're gonna start by putting a bed of greens on the bottom. And then we will slice up our cheese, layer that on the greens, and then we'll pile the tomatoes in the middle. I think that's gonna look really, really nice. Hey, Tom. How are you? And McNeil, welcome in guys. Dogfish had 90 minute IPA. How come it's 90 minutes? And helicopter, why do you hate cherry tomatoes? Why is that a thing? Some other goods here as well. So I have greens from the farm. Nice bag of mixed greens. We actually have some lettuce in there now, not just arugula. And these are already previously washed. And that might actually be enough. I'm just gonna slowly pick through it to see if there's any wilted pieces in here. You saw one of your past graduates and I am good, Tom. Thank you for asking. I'm happy it's Friday. And I'm excited for halibut burgers. So one of your past graduates is starting his PhD. Nice Opteryx. That is awesome news. I'm sure that makes you feel good as a teacher to see students doing that. It's the skin helicopter. What? That's the best part like so crunchy and delicious with the more alcoholic beers you need to boil the wort for longer ah see I didn't even know that what's the percentage on the beer okay I think that's enough or should we just use all of the greens let's just use all of it because the cheese and the tomatoes will weigh it down anyways So let's not fuss too much. We don't even need this lettuce. She can go back in the fridge where she came from. Voluptuous helicopter. Brewing season starts once school is officially over. Yay. Okay, just making sure there's no other yucky pieces of lettuce. I like these little guys. That's really nice looking. And I think these are little mustard greens as well. 
It's gonna be a nice colorful salad for spring. Yeah, exactly, Opteryx. I've made beer bagels from wort before. I should do that. The 90 minute beer is 9%. Oh, dangerous. McNeil, thanks for the biddies. Yeah, fresh matzo. Give it all. Give us all of it. Speaking of matzo, hello there. Get a little fancy and fry the basil. What, Sammy? Do we have to, or can we just keep it fresh? They put food quality extra virgin olive oil on it. Yeah, they do. Your dad used to have a reno business as well, Steve. That's so cool. Yeah, Frank started his when we were still in St. Albert and then stopped it for a little bit when they first came to the island, but he started it back up. So for our matza, I just want to make little slices and I don't want to take it out of this bag. So I don't want to really contaminate it at all if I need to save it, if we have any leftover. <laughs> Lemon. Greatest jokes ever today. So you want nice thin slices like that. This is so lovely. Just want to eat it right now. You've been watching the YouTuber Strictly Dumplings. Let me look that up. I might know which one that is. Yes, 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 yes. Sammy and I have almost watched all of his things. And it is so good. We watched like a bunch of his Vegas ones before we went there, McNeil. And he eats some awesome food for sure. He has a good life. Scat is back. What did you choose for food, Scat? Hello, welcome to Starbucks. Sea helicopter? Never put dirty hands on cheese. Because you might go back to it a couple days later and it won't be very happy looking. Always keep your cheese clean. Otherwise it gets under cheese. Steve, your dad's done almost everything for home building and such. Nice. Yeah, Frank is pretty good with everything. He's got those skills. Put this little guy in the middle. So I'm probably only going to use half of this block. And I am okay with that. How good does this look though, guys? Well, you're not supposed to touch it with like dirty hands and stuff, lemon, because it can easily contaminate it. Okay, this one I'm cutting into two pieces. And then those will just get put there. And I think that's enough for the cheese. We didn't even make a dent in this. I might have to eat a little piece. And by might, I mean I do. That's uh, the bonus of being the chef, you know? 
It looks like cream cheese. It's so soft, Trist. Like, it's unreal. Super, super good. So I'm just gonna put that into a bag real quick. Put it back in the fridge and then we will start to slice up our tomatoes. Thanks, Guy Fox. Thinking it's gonna look nice and colorful. Yes, Opterix. Those noodle makers are crazy. I wanna do that one day. Goat cheese is the best McNeil. Have you had goat feta? Get in my belly. Yum. Just tastes like butter. Shouldn't even be allowed, honestly. Crush. Liz. I was thinking about you today as well. I was like, I really hope Liz comes in to the stream again. Kind of missing her. How have you been? What kind of cheese is that, Steve? It's just a soft mozzarella. Fresh, soft matzo. <laughs> you chose sashimi and sushi. Nice, Scat. I was gonna. I wasn't gonna be surprised if you choose the Wonder Bread and the bologna, because you never know if you might have a hankering. But sushi and sashimi way better. Okay, let me just uh, sharpen up my paring knife a bit. I'm gonna get into these tomats. I'm just gonna have them. Goat feta you've never make meal? I just picked this one up from the store and it is so, so good. And this is from Costco as well. I think this container was around $17, but it is amazing, like way better than regular feta. So I don't know if maybe you can find that somewhere. Guy Fox with the Munster. Yeah, you do. Munster cheese and ranch dressing. <laughs> I love it, Trist. That is for sure a guilty pleasure. Like, you know you're guilty of eating that together. But it's just so good. Thanks, Des. How's the day? Stressed with work. I was gonna say, like, you being stressed is the exact reason why you're sick. That's the worst. Okay, so we're just gonna take a bunch of these, lay them out on the salad. I kinda wanna keep them more in the center so you can still see the cheese on the outside. It's a presentation thing. We're gonna pile it high. You're gonna be teaching pre-calculus. Yeah, RIP, oh my gosh. Good luck with that. You would never see me in one of those classes. I am so bad at math. Not even afraid to admit it. My strengths are definitely more in science and English. Yes, Liz, feta. Like, this would be really good with the goat feta as well. Just, I don't think we could call it a caprese. Just have to call it, like, tomato feta salad. Which is still okay. It doesn't need a fancy name to be good. Thick cut beef bologna with cheese and pickles. You would, Des. I haven't had bologna in so long. Bologna. 
Was anyone else here weird and put ketchup in with their bologna sandwiches? Butter, bologna, and ketchup was my jam, and I don't know why. Oh no, you have a coworker problem. Be careful with that, honestly. Because when I got super stressed about a coworker, like, it really amped up my anxiety and bad things happened. So just be careful, like take your health very seriously. Just having like hatred towards someone is still not good for you. Especially when you're not used to feeling that way. The tomatoes are tumbling around. I'll put a couple farther down. That looks lovely. So now I'm gonna pick the basil. I don't think I'm gonna chop it just yet because it's gonna get bruised really easily and it might turn brown. You always thought bologna sandwiches were inferior to just using ham. That's a fact. But bologna was so, like, it's so cheap, right? I'd like to make a homemade bologna. I'm sure it would be tasty. And at least I'd know what's in it. Is spam the same as salami? Not even close. Fresh ramen noodles. The stuff that you guys are saying in chat today. I want all of those things. Yes, please. Okay, so we can just leave that off to the side. I picked that basil from my garden. Yes, I did. Check me out. Thanks for the follow. Welcome in. And then we just have some chive flowers that we're gonna pick and use to garnish for the salad. <laughs> no, Messiah, don't. How would one eat this, Guy Fox? I plan on just taking like a scoop out and transferring it onto a plate. It's gonna be served family style. Scat, you have a ramen addiction. That is okay, I think. I think a ramen addiction is a lot better than any other addictions. dirt bag well it is freaky friday so uh don't hold back guys thanks death you're still alive man yeah we're just putting the flowers on the salad no big deal well, we might as well use them if they're there and they're edible. Don't waste a thing. And plus they add this really nice kind of floral onion flavor. So that's that. Done with those. The color contrast is amazing. And we have five minutes until we are going to bake our bread. So I'm going to take it out of the oven, turn our oven on to preheat, and we can get those ready. So there's our lovely little salad so far. All we got to do is garnish it with our basil and our balsamic glaze. This is what's sitting on the stove. So now you can see how it's cooling off and it's starting to thicken up. And this is just reduced balsamic vinegar with a little bit of honey. So one cup of balsamic and a tablespoon of honey. And that way you'll get a nice concentrated flavor. 
Easy peasy. You love ramen noodles with peanut butter? What, Tris? I've never heard that one. But I think that would actually be pretty good. Yay, dirtbag. I actually asked that question earlier, guys. I asked, what is your favorite fish to eat? And how do you prepare it? I don't know if halibut is my favorite. I think I would still choose salmon as my favorite fish or black cod, AKA sable fish. And that is also a really fatty fish. So for me, I'll always choose a fattier fish. I don't know why. Probably because it just melts in your mouth. Salmon Guy Fox, yes. You like tuna fish straight out of the can? That's fair, Liz. That's an easy preparation. Okay, guys, let's check out these buns. Thinking they're gonna be beautiful. So our little proofing chamber worked perfectly then. Like, look at those. Way better than last time I made them. I'm so excited. Let me just quickly look at the oven temps that I need for those. And then they're gonna take 20 minutes to bake. Salmon baked with miso and orange juice. Lemon, you would say shark. You would. So 375 Fahrenheit for 15 to 18 minutes until golden. And it also says to brush them with a little bit of butter on top. Okay, I feel you recipe. I'm picking up what you're putting down. Pacific salmon, every other is second rate. I agree with that, Des. Grilled salmon with rice and corn on the cob with a side salad. Nice, Uncle Stinky. I'm happy so many people chose salmon. I thought a lot of people would choose like cod or something different. They are so smooth, Lemon. Smooth as buns ever. Garlic butter? No, I didn't, I'm not putting garlic butter, Liz, but we're gonna have to take some of this and melt it real quick. Tilapia crusted in almond and Parmesan panko. What? These preparations though. Thanks, Steve. I know, finally I nailed these buns. <laughs> Salmon and wasabi, like raw then? Or do you bake it and then eat it with wasabi? Salmon from the Rogue River. That is so cool, Des. Getting yelled at. Okay, Chef Mike. Okay. I've had smelt trist. I actually had them fried up when I was in Lyon in France. They served like a plate of fried smelts as an appetizer with lemon and some kind of like tartar sauce with it. It was really good, super crispy. Hey Forsaken, good to see you in here too. Flying fish is your all time favorite. That is very, very cool. I've never eaten that. What would you say the flavor is similar to? We're just gonna brush our buns with some butter. So 
people the last time I made these buns, they were like little baseballs. <laughs> they definitely did not proof up like this. And then when our oven goes off, we know it's ready. Cooked salmon with wasabi would still be good, I think, McNeil. Still be a good combo. Whoever smelt it cooked it. Smelt is like little minnows, let's say, Steve. And then they just batter it up and fry them. And you literally eat the whole thing because it's super crispy. Very, very weird. But it was tasty, like I have to say. You can't feel the fish bones or anything like that inside. It maybe reminds you of trout flying fish. That would be delicious then, Forsaken Stars. Thanks, helicopter. I know that. I think that's my OCD a little bit. I don't know, though. <laughs> Someone please tell me otherwise. I don't think anyone's ever asked me that. McNeil. What's my favorite cuisine? I would say probably Italian cuisine. I can't go wrong with pastas or pizzas. I just can't. What did the fish say before it got eaten by the shark? Oh no, what? What did it say? Okay, what do we have left on this list? So I just have to portion the halibut up. So we'll put the salad aside, we'll put a couple things away. And we'll portion the fish, and then pretty much when the buns come out, we're going to cook up the halibut, put our buns together, and then we're going to call it a day. I have to slice a little bit of cheddar as well. God help me. That's a good one, Guy Fox. It wasn't that cheesy. You like Spanish food helicopter? Pasta is the ultimate comfort food. Yeah, I'm kind of a pasta snob. Like whenever I go out, if there is handmade pasta on the menu, I pretty much always choose that. <laughs> Somebody clipped that. <laughs> okay, getting the cheese out. We'll cut that up first. I'm just going to tear off a little bit of greens to put on the bottom of the burger. Just need a little bit of greenery there still. Some contrast. Flying fish is milder in flavor, not really that fishy. I'm sure I would love it. That sounds so good. <laughs> yes, Tris. Hawaiian za for the win. That's really good, Steve. The fact that you can try everything once. I think everyone should do that. 
instead of just turning your nose up because it looks weird. Hello, Rod. Welcome in. How's it going? Elodie, thanks for the follow. Welcome to the squad. No way, Ostrich. See, I feel a lot of people were traumatized by beets. I've eaten a lot of beets in my lifetime, and I'm so happy that I'm not traumatized by them. They're still my favorite. You had it in Barbados. That is unreal. I was going to say, I've never seen that around here. So we don't want a very, very thick slice of cheese on our halibut. We still want to be able to taste the halibut. So I'm going to do something like that on each burger and you can still like almost see through these slices. And I'm going to cut four portions. And then whatever extra halibut is left after I cut the four pieces for dinner, I'm just gonna package those away. I don't wanna cook it up and then not eat it and have to like reheat it or eat it cold. I'd rather cook it fresh. Yeah, Rod, I'm feeling the same, man. Very much looking forward to the weekend. Boom. The cheese has been cut. <laughs> Sammy. Elodie, you're a cereal lurker, but you're so glad you found the stream. Awesome. Thank you. And it's totally fine. I actually have quite a few lurkers in here, so don't feel bad about that. Chat made me decide. No, Sammy did, actually. I was going to do provolone. And then he's like, nah, just do classic orange cheddar. So he wins this round. And our oven beat. So those buns are going in. So I'll do eight minutes and then I'll rotate the trays since we have two. And then we'll do another eight. Optrix, you love Brussels sprouts and a lot of people don't. That is true. Yeah, what's with you, man? You don't like beets, but you like Brussels? I don't get it. I love pickled beets, Uncle Stinky. Love them. Probably one of my favorite way to eat beets. No, I'm not even grinding the halibut. I thought that would be really sad to do since it's so expensive. So I'd rather just cook a nice piece of filet. See, that's what I thought, Guy Fox. I was like, I think provolone would be like just funky enough and like have a great melting point, but we'll go with cheddar. Right. We'll, we'll go with cheddar. <laughs> Just gotta bug Sammy about it. It's too late, I already cut the cheese. So like I was saying earlier, we only want the really nice filet pieces. So this guy, I'll cut it in half and we'll get two burgers out of that. And then for the filet here, I'm gonna cut a nice piece out of here. The tail section is not the best to eat. So we'll leave that for like a chowder or something like that. Cause you can see how there is quite a bit of sinew and stuff down there. And then just so you guys know, don't be freaked out if you ever find like a worm or something in your halibut. 
they are bottom feeders so it doesn't happen quite often just pick it out i think i've found like two or three worms in my lifetime of cooking while working with halibut so not that many but don't just don't freak out it's okay you're not gonna die that's all i want to say You don't have the sea for fresh fish. What do you mean? This is wild caught halibut. You've never had halibut. Uh, I don't even know if the flavor is as funky as tilapia. Like if I'm smelling it right now, it just smells like the sea and then don't worry guys, that's not a worm. That's just a piece of fish. The flakes in the flesh of the fish are very large. So it's almost like a steak consistency or texture. That's why a lot of people like it because it's not like very flaky and small. It's very, very dense and not super fatty. I ruined halibut for you. Yeah, that's exactly what it smells like. Yeah, it's a worm. It's going to end. I'm sorry, I don't have the budget to buy an entire halibut. That's a little bit much to ask. Considering these three pieces were around $45, I could not buy a whole halibut. So there's our two pieces and we want to keep everything relatively the same size so it cooks at the same rate. This piece, I don't even think I'm going to cut into. I'm going to save that. It happens with catfish too. Exactly. Like it's a natural thing that happens. So these guys... Uh, maybe I will cut this piece because this piece gets quite thin around here and I know it'll cook too quick. Halibut's 25 bucks a pound here. Let me look at what we paid. We are at 47 a kilo. Misadventure, hello and welcome back. How is your Friday treating you? $21 a pound, a little bit less expensive than you. Can I buy a whole fish? Yes. I could buy a whole fish. I've been eyeing up a couple at some of the stores that I go to, but they haven't been the best looking. I don't know. I've just been not like completely sold on buying the whole fish that I've seen. Okay, so there's our lovely four pieces of halibut for our burgers. The rest of that is going to get packed away. I have no containers down here. Oh, sorry guys. That was super loud. Did not mean to close that. You got to visit the school you'll be teaching at. Nice. Middle school math. Yeah, Opteryx is a teacher as well. Oh, I smell the buns already, guys. Already. Buttery goodness. So this guy, 
We can just put that aside by the stove. So we're gonna be cooking it pretty quick. I'm just gonna quickly wash my hands. And the timer's about to go off for the buns. Salmon in Australia is 26 bucks a kilo. Oh my God, McNeil, that's expensive. It's just salmon. Okay, good old switcheroos happening. And oh man. Look at how nice that's looking already. So that was on the top rack and these were on the bottom. So you can see why you have to rotate. Eight more minutes, guys. And I'm thinking the extra four buns will probably be made into a sort of egg sandwich for brunch this weekend. I think that sounds like a good plan. Okay, while those are baking, I'm just gonna go take a quick bathroom break and then we can pretty much finish everything else up. Yum for buns. And contain a 100% less plastic. That is a fact, Miss Cyan. Yeah, we got fresh buns here. <laughs> we are bad. I love it. Okay, let's quickly finish off the salad before we start cooking. So I'm just gonna quickly chop the basil. We can garnish. And then this halibut will only take, let's say between seven, let's say seven to nine minutes to cook. And when I like to chop basil, I like to stack the leaves up. Just makes it a lot easier to chop it all really nice. And I put the smaller leaves on top and then kind of roll it into a cigar shape. Armored, thanks for the 35 bitties.
bluey is your most common typo. Yeah, I have goals to learn Fahrenheit to Celsius. Me too, Scat. I'm with you. I have no idea what they're talking about in chat right now, and I'm okay with that. What? Nah, dinner's almost ready. Oh, don't really? even don't even think about that. Oh, so you already heard them? Yeah. Oh, okay. Buns are baked. I'm gonna get ready to cook the halibut. Oh, alright. You ain't going anywhere, Sammy. Fine. You're stuck here. Forever, I know that. <laughs> Sammy, you're It's only three degrees in Oz right now. Greetings, Saving Sunset. So here's our basil, just nicely chopped up. Just gonna sprinkle that all over the salad. Don't even think about it. Exactly, steampunk. <laughs> I was like, I am not postponing dinner for you to drive an hour. Nope. What? Sack. What? Woohoo. Sack with the resub for two months in a row. Time does fly when we're having fun. Thank you so much. I'm glad you are still here with us. Let me just say that. Welcome into the squad. Okay, so all we have to do to finish this salad is drizzle on our balsamic, which I'll do that near the end. And then I'm also going to use some garlic oil. So that's just olive oil that has roasted with some garlic on the stove top. So I save the oil every time I roast garlic. So it's kind of flavored with garlic but typically you would just do balsamic vinegar and a really nice olive oil on the salad. I'm gonna kick it up a little notch. So that's for you, Liz. I know you wanted the garlic butter. It smells too good in here right now. I need to check what's going on. Literal perfection, but we can salt and pepper the salad right now. So let's do that. And all we got to do is cook our Hallie. What is the brown sauce? I made a balsamic glaze with a cup of balsamic vinegar reduced it by around half maybe even more and then stirred in a spoonful of honey hello <laughs> oh my god the hallie is pretty hot yeah she is vacuuming all the time. Balsamic is incredible. I love it in a glaze. Put that ish on everything. Okay, so I'll put the salt and pepper over here. Are you ready for these? Sammy, you have to look. You got some Bono. buns, hun. Look at my buns. I don't know if that's loud on screen when you look at your buns. Yeah, you might get banned. Those are some uh, some nice hot buns, though. Thank you. Nice and rounded, you know? <laughs> yes, my peeps. Let me check for firmness. <laughs> hey, don't touch my buns. Oh, oh that's hot. Woohoo! Touch your bun. Beautiful brioche buns. Look at the bottom. Perfect golden brown. So those just need to cool off a little bit. They smell incredible. They do smell really good. Mm. 
the husband has a hungry at you think? Yeah, he does. Just fishing for the views. Always, Steve. You know me. <laughs> okay, let me transfer one tray of those elsewhere to cool. Probably just right beside my cutting board here. And then we can start to cook our fish. Oh, lemon. Tristan said eggs, really? That's your favorite protein to eat? Short ribs, yes. 100%. Maybe brisket, though. Okay, cast iron pan. A wee bit of grapeseed oil. Suppose I can turn the oven off now. Misadventure, pork chops, nice. Forsaken, rib eye. Peanut butter counts. <laughs> There's a good amount of protein in there. So just enough oil in the pan to coat it. Yeah, I got some hidden buns, Death. Steve, you are for sure one of the easiest people to feed. Like, you're not picky at all. Okay, I'm just going to season up the halibut fillets. Classic salt and pepper. Let's let the fish speak for itself. We also have that really nice tartar sauce we made, so we don't want to get too many flavors going here. But I did see a recipe for a blackened halibut burger that looked really good. If you want to kick things up a notch. Is Frank home? Yeah, everyone's home. Yeah, okay. Sunday roast, yes, McNeil. That is the small bottle of grapeseed oil, does. <laughs> Believe it or not. Yeah, just enough oil to splatter everywhere, Sack. That, that's about it. <laughs> You're having brisket tomorrow, Forsaken? Unreal. Scat, can you please get Discord? <laughs> it's right there. It's super easy to sign up. We have a lot of fun in there. There's a lot of good stuff posted. Like four months almost of recipes that I've done. No, that's awesome, Steve, that you like to try different things. Like, really awesome. You're working on your grain mill this weekend. Nice. Grapeseed oil, teach you. I just like to use that oil instead of canola when I pan fry. It has a nice high heat as well on it compared to olive oil. Am I a picky eater? Not at all, Steve. The only thing I don't like is like liver. Anything with that really strong iron flavor is not my thing. But other than that, I, I eat most things for sure. And just so everyone knows, I applied to six different jobs today. So we'll see what I get back. And hoping for like part-time mornings so I can still stream in the afternoon. And Optrix, I was going to say, I applied to a place called Nuka Rose Milling. 
which is a flour mill out in Machosen, around 20 minute drive from here. Thanks. Okay, let's start to heat this up. How's the lighting? Still pretty good, hey? Go with a medium high heat to start and we'll wait till our oil is almost smoking. Good luck on them, thanks Lemon. I think it would be really fun to work at a mill. <laughs> Bacon makes life worthwhile. Yeah, it does. So you want to coat the bottom of the pan. That's a hot bun still, but I'm so proud of them. Last time they were like literally smaller than my fist, like little baseballs. Throw it against a wall, it would not break open. <laughs> Tristan loves doggo. Hopefully McNeil, I mean, we're getting close. My goal next for this stream is to reach 75 average viewers. So we're about halfway there, which is awesome considering I've only been doing it for four months. Most people get partner within like a year, so that's what I'm hoping for. Oh my gosh, Steve, he puked it up once and has not had it since. That is the saddest thing ever. But yeah, totally the end to a lot of foods. <laughs> if it comes back up once, you're like, oh, I can't do it again. Okay, I might just put this glaze behind here so it kind of warms up a bit. It's looking a little thick. And so is our garlic oil. It's like solidified. You're that way with slow gin. Gin surprisingly did not rip like I'm not wrecked from gin, but it definitely has wrecked me. So yay for that. Posh has never had puppies. She's never been bred. Discord mission for scat. Yes. Oh, okay, lemon. Have a wonderful weekend. I'll miss all you guys. But I'll see you on Monday, I'm sure. If I could do in the kitchen with a celebrity chef, who would it be? That is so hard. Action Bronson. You think Action Bronson? There's too many to even choose. I messaged uh, Maddie Matheson today who is a chef from Toronto that's gotten super famous on Vice. Yeah, everyone should message him. Yeah, everyone message Maddie Matheson on Instagram and say, go see Cook with Kate. I asked him to come and cook with me when his cookbook comes out in October. <laughs> so we'll see about that. Bye, Lemon. Oh, okay. Oh yeah, because it's uh, Memorial Day. Okay, have a great weekend then. Enjoy the extra day. Action Bronson is dope, but Sammy said if you ever met him, he'd have to grow his beard back. <laughs> okay, this is almost hot, or it is hot, as you can see. Just a little puff of smoke, so I'm gonna put the halibut in, season side down. Like so. 
Yeah, Scott. Coming into Discord. Slack work has been crazy busy because of the holiday. That's how it is here as well. <laughs> it's so true, McNeil. If there's no sizzle, there's something wrong. Well, typically around two to three minutes per side. And then we're going to flip it. And then once we flip it, that's when I'm going to put the cheese on so it slowly starts to melt over top. And you really don't want to overcook halibut because it's not very fatty and it gets dry super fast. So I'd always recommend cooking it a little bit less, especially if it's going to sit for a couple minutes. You hate when there's skin on the fish. Unless it's really crispy, Steve. It's looking good, though. If it don't sizzle, it's vegan. <laughs> Okay, just grabbed our tartar sauce out as well. You've only had it once armored. It's really good. And also, another note, if you go to flip your fish and it's still kind of stuck to the pan, don't flip it yet. That means it's not ready. The fish will lift when it's ready to flip. Just trust the process. Not quite. Patience is key. Go to seafood calamari. So good armored. I actually like Humboldt squid the best if I was to choose calamari. Yeah, it's true, McNeil. Even if you have to finish the other side for only like a minute or so, it's much better than trying to rush it and flip it. Because you're creating that really nice crust right now. So you don't want to wreck it. It's the same with the steak on the barbecue. Or even chicken. Well, that piece is good. Hey, we're good. Nice golden brown color. That's what we're looking for. Yum. Osterich, do you have a tradition where some of the retired teachers go to a brew pub, have lunch and beers? You started at 11.30 a.m. <laughs> you had a four hour nap. Love that. Okay, that's what strawberry breakfast is. I was wondering. Hello, Viyun. How are you? Whoa, you had some cordon bleu schnitzel? That's what I made for Viyun yesterday on stream. That is so funny, Osterix.
Okay, I'm going to turn this pan off. And those are going to continue to cook. Let's put our cheese on so it can melt. most expensive filet of fish you'll ever have. <laughs> you black pie? It's more yeah. expensive than halibut? Yeah, table fish is more expensive than halibut. Well, shoot. It's been good, view. We're actually ending the stream pretty early today. And I'm going to do this. Is that burner is still really hot or actually I might do this because this piece is a little bit thicker than the other ones so let's just do that get a little heat up on our glaze and then we can start to dress our buns and stuff gimp the cheese is just a old cheddar I will not quit Quit poking the fish, Steve. Hey, Bachelor Life. I'm happy you came in. So the stream's almost over, which means I'm going to end up picking the top cheer and donate of the week. And so far, you're the top donator. Just want to make sure they're not overcooking. That's why I keep poking them. Feeling where they're at. <laughs> now that is heaven, guys. What food are we making for the weekend? Tomorrow is undetermined. But Sunday, Sammy said he's making a brisket. <laughs> How much to be top donator? Steve, you're going for it. You're going to steal it. I think Bachelor gave me just over $5. <laughs> Thank you, Steampunk. I know, like... It's so wonderfully squishy. It's so floppy. Yeah. I just want to die. We're going to die. Okay, so just open these guys up. We're going to put tartar sauce on the bottom. You don't want to leave the fish in the pan for too long, guys. And you could toast the buns if you want, but these are so fresh that I don't think they even need to be toasted. Put a nice dollop of your homemade tartar sauce on the bottom. We'll just put a little bed of greens on top of that. What's that? Oh yeah. Scat, thanks for the 200 biddies. You guys, being so generous. I don't know if anyone's gonna keep up with Tristan this week. But I think he said he was going to give his request to someone else. I don't know if he still wants to or not. Still need that greenery, guys. Just gonna add a bit of crunch is all. So let's do this. That looks unreal. And Sammy and I, whenever we make burgers, 
We always see say that droop, not that drip. So your cheese should just, should just droop over, not actually drip off. If it starts to drip, you took it too far. It's actually perfectly done steampunk. That's why I turned the pan off early. You can see this little flake just fell off there, but it's still super moist. Yum. You're so hungry, McNeil. I'm sorry. <laughs> hey, put your top bun on. And that's that. Let's quickly dress our salad. McNeil, thank you. And Tristan. You guys. <laughs> Worms offer good protein, it's true. So going in with our garlic oil first, you can even see there is a little bit of roasted garlic in it. So there is no other dressing on this salad, just the oil and the vinegar. So you can be quite generous if you want. Now that it's loosened up again. Opterix, yeah, we missed you, man. Ready for our glaze action. This is gonna get crazy. Thanks, Tuli. And then this way, the balsamic vinegar doesn't just flow all the way to the bottom. It actually stays on the stuff that you're dressing it with. Just a touch more. And that is our caprese salad. Thanks, Stinky. I know, it's a very, like, springtime meal. I'm feeling it. I think I might just take this entire board and go take a photo of it outside. I'm just going to hold it and Sam's going to take a photo. And then we're going to do a quick taste test all together. Does that sound good, guys? Do I ever do keto or vegan meals? I used to do vegan meals. I might still put one in there once in a while, but haven't done it in a long time. I used to do meatless Mondays and I have never done a keto meal, but if that's something that you're interested in, for sure I could do it. Okay, we're going. Sham sham. I just dropped the entire board, guys. That's it. We're ordering pizza. Oh, I would for sure crush a hurricane tryst. Okay, I'm going in. Dead Lee Burger. Ready? I should always do the test tasting. Of course, McNeil. 
have to taste test it. Even though it looks good, how do we know it tastes good? Okay, we're going in. It might get messy. Let's get a plate. Dripping my uh, halibut juices all over. Okay, big bite. Mm-hmm. Like, look how much juices drip off of this still. You guys were worried about me overcooking it. Probably have tartar sauce everywhere. Someone please clip that. Me having sauce on my face. So good. This is seriously delicious. The bun is super soft. The fish is perfectly cooked. It's not fishy at all. The cheddar, uh, honestly, I don't know if it's needed, but it is a great addition. Nonetheless, can never go wrong with cheese, in my opinion. And the tartar sauce just amps everything else up. Like that hint of dill, the lemon zest, and the pickles for a little bit of crunch. Perfection. Like I said, probably one of the best filet of fish you'll ever eat in your life. If you want, you can bring those up. You trying the salad or no? Yeah. I'm just going to take a bite from the salad. Okay. Well, you want to just take the board? Yep. Okay, go for it. And do the salad. I'm trying the salad. I know. Try the salad, and then I will take the board. <laughs> Sammy! Where's the blood? What do you mean? There should be no blood. That's terrifying. <laughs> what are you talking about? Okay, bite o salad. We're going in. Got a little bit of cheese, couple tomatoes, basil, and lettuce. Mmm. Mm-hmm. The garlic oil and the balsamic is so good. And obviously never forget to salt and pepper this either. It really does need it. So tomatoes are nice and sweet. Balsamic contrasts that with the vinegar flavor. Um, having the fresh basil is just like pop a flavor in your mouth. That's it guys. We are done those. Really, really good dinner. This Hi guys. is probably one of my favorite things I've made on stream yet just because of how simple it is and how it just lets all of the ingredients speak for itself. Bachelor, you did win. Well, I'm just about to end the stream. I don't know if Steve is going to one up you or not. I know it's an early one. Crazy, hey? 520. This is one of the earliest streams ever. And I feel good about that. It is super nice outside and I would love to just Go enjoy the weather. I haven't really been outside at all yet today. I've been doing a lot of computer work. Sounds good, Opterix. Yeah, we're gonna have a ton of food that you guys are gonna be able to pick to use from the garden. It's gonna be lovely. Yeah, we are gonna go for a bike ride, I think, Tris. That's our thing. After dinner, we go for a bike ride. Sounds good, Steve. Okay, thanks everyone for the awesome stream. What a lovely Friday, and just so you guys know, I'm not sure if you saw, but we hit our follower goal of 700 yesterday. So I just put in a new one, and hopefully in less than a month, once again, we will hit 800. Feels freaking great, let's just say that. Doesn't cheese not go well with fish? It depends on the type of fish and the type of cheese. So if you're familiar with your flavors of your fish and your cheese, you should be able to pair it well. I chose cheddar because it isn't super strong, but it melts really nice. Okay, Bachelor Life, so what do you get to do? You're the top donator of our week. You are able to request a meal for me to cook on stream next week. 
Um, I don't, you are in our Discord, so either message me on Discord or just whisper me on Twitch. Whatever you want me to make, we will work something out. And then Tristan, are you asking for something this week or are you giving it to somebody else? I'm just going to go find someone to raid real quick. I don't really have anyone on unless you guys do. <laughs> anyone I have on right now is just playing Fortnite and it's all the big hitters. So that's it. I think we're just going to call it a day. All right, Loriander, I'm glad you were able to make it for the whole stream. Have a wonderful weekend, guys. Okay, you want you want the beef tamales? Good night, everyone. Enjoy your weekend. I will see you Monday. And if you have that day off for Memorial Day, feel free to just enjoy it. I will not expect you here. Okay, we're going to end the stream there. We're not going to raid or do anything. Keeping it good. Okay, guys. Love you all. Thanks for the support, as always. Have a good one.